Hello, my name's Callum, and welcome to The Price of Life. Hello, people of the internet. Good morning. Today's topic, what is the environmental cost of computers? For this video, I will be focusing on desktop computers and the monitor that goes with it. So first off, to get an understanding of how computers affect our environment, we need to know what is a computer made of? How does a computer work? So I won't go into the nitty gritty of how computers work, but there are links in the references below, so have a look down there. So my simplest explanation of a computer is this. It's basically an electrical board in a box with heaps of microscopic small electrical components that talk to each other in zeros and ones. The main electrical components are resistors, capacitors, fuses, transistors, integrated circuits, relays, switches, circuit breakers, etc, etc. So how is a computer made from sand, metals and other resources? And the journey begins. Here are the main components that make up a typical PC desktop computer. There is the computer case, the motherboard, the CPU, the CPU heatsink cooler, RAM, video card, the power supply, the hard disk drive slash solid state drive, and the optical drive, plus all the various cables connecting these together. So how are all these components made? So this video would go on for hours if I had to explain every little part inside a computer and how it was made and what resources it was made from. However, here are some interesting facts. So a United Nations University study found that about 1.8 tons of raw materials is used to make one desktop PC. It also said it requires around 10 times its weight in materials and chemicals before it's ready to go to work. Computers are made from copper, lead, gold, aluminium, magnesium, silicon, zinc, cobalt, nickel, iron, tin, silver, also rare materials, neodymium, gallium, lutetium, tantalum, rutherfordium, plutonium, various different plastics, alloys, etc, etc. An important part for computers is sand or silicon dioxide. One of the main locations where silicon dioxide is mined is in Cape Flattery, Australia. Silicon is derived from quartzite. Quartz is melted and crystallized by seed crystals. It is pulled out into a long cylinder and cut by diamond saws into wafers. These are then distributed to various factories for making different computer components. The high purity silicon is bathed in hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid to clean the wafers. It is then bathed in deionized water and sulfuric acid to remove any particulate matter. After the second bath, the oxide layer is removed with deionized water and hydrofluoric acid. The wafer is finally bathed one last time in hydrochloric acid, hydrogen peroxide and deionized water. And that's only the basic starting blocks of making a CPU. Think of how many different components are inside a computer. These components may need three or four different materials from different factories and go through different production processes from raw materials to final product. The logistics of each different computer part coming from different factories and put together to make different things is absolutely insane. Each factory has maintenance costs, power costs, logistical costs of getting materials. Think of all the logistical costs of sending products from different countries to different factories to make computers. The environmental consumption costs are so hard to pinpoint, but I believe would be huge. Here is a small example of the logistical cost of moving different parts to different countries. Gigabyte motherboard is made in Taiwan. Intel CPU factories are scattered throughout America. The distance from Taiwan to the Oregon CPU factory is 10,237 kilometers. And this isn't even including truck distances from port. The oil tonnage used per day 
on a ship voyage of that size would be 40 tons of oil per day. You can see this small exercise highlights the different logistic consumption costs. Let's take an estimation that there are 100 different factories used to make a computer. So 100 different products would all be sent to the final company to manufacture the computer. To get the environmental consumption cost, you would need to get the factory costs, the power costs, the maintenance costs of machinery, and the logistical costs, which include the transport vehicles used, fuel, maintenance of machinery, and times that all by a hundred, to even start coming close to the true environmental cost of making computers. Woo! Congratulations, people of the internet. You've made it this far. I think you get the general picture. So we've finally got a computer. We still need a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, the various power cables, and we need to make sure we have electricity and all the software downloaded onto your computer so the damn thing will work. All of these will have an environmental cost as well. And we haven't even got started on the internet. So there are a few final questions. How long does a computer last? Let's say roughly five to 10 years. So this huge environmental cost will begin again when you buy your next computer. Another consideration is e-waste and the environmental impact of dumping computers. I will leave a number of links in the description below showing all the different processes of making computers and the environmental impacts. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you liked my content, give it a good thumbs up. And if you want to see more, click the subscribe button and join me on my adventures. You can also support me by going to buymeacoffee.com in the link below.